This is a 102 megapixel medium format camera that's about the same size as a Canon 5D. Meet the Fujifilm GFX 100S. This thing is absolutely tiny for what it is. Alongside other full frame bodies, you could barely suspect this is housing a much larger sensor with in-body IS. I got to spend about one day with this pre-production GFX 100S and I do have to give it back pretty much right after I record this, so these are early impressions. But in a nutshell, this is packing a very similar performance as the GFX 100, but in a slimmer body. So sort of like a GFX 100 Lite, if you will. Even though the difference in naming is merely a letter S, they look so, so different on the outside. The 100 absolutely towers over the 100S and the GFX 100 has this two-tone black and gray and a huge EVF and a vertical grip going on, which does make the 100S look very low profile and discreet in comparison. So in terms of visibility, a really parting difference. Coming in such a small body, this is probably the first medium format camera that I'm describing the grip as slightly shallow. It does have the same fine textured rubber finish on the grip as the GFX 100, and I'm glad that a smaller body comes with a similarly good EVF as well. It's a huge high resolution EVF, although it is no longer removable on the 100S like it was on the 100, meaning you do not get the option of using it with the TL1 accessory to make it tiltable like on the GFX 100. The screen, however, is tiltable both this way and this way. It's also got a more standard looking mode dial now and it's got six freaking custom modes. There's also a separate selector switch for toggling between stills and video mode. And as far as video goes, it seems to be the same as the GFX 100, 4K up to 30p, 10-bit 42 internally and 42 externally, of course, with F-Log available. And the 100S still has IBIS despite being so much smaller. As to whether or not it's the same as the GFX 100's IBIS, that's gonna require a bit more testing. And although this is very likely showing the same 102 megapixel sensor as the GFX 100, the 100S is definitely using a different shutter mechanism. For starters, they sound different. So even though the 100S sounds more gentle, it doesn't seem to be fitted with the same shock absorption tech as the GFX 100. In essence, the GFX 100's shutter mechanism is kind of suspended in a shock mount to minimize the transfer of the shutter's movement into the camera body. So by the sound alone, even though it sounds like the GFX 100 packs more of a punch, the movement is actually very isolated from the chassis. It's kind of like going over a bump in an expensive limo. The 100S, on the other hand, feels a lot more connected to its shutter, especially at faster shutter speeds, you're going to feel quite a bit of a tug from the mechanical shutter. Not sure if that points to a complete absence of shock absorbers in the 100S, but that's just an observation I can share from spending a day with this new camera. Gladly though, the autofocus and responsiveness of the user interface appears to be on par with the GFX 100, which by medium format standards is already very respectable. But adding to that, the 100S does arrive bearing a gift for Fuji fans. It's got a brand new film simulation. This one's called Nostalgia Negative, and it's supposed to simulate the look of aged printed photos. You're now probably wondering why aren't I showing you any photos yet. Reason being, I'm technically not able to. In fact, as of recording this, I have not seen for myself what this new film sim looks like yet. You see, I am recording this quite a while ahead of the launch, and this is a very early pre-production unit of the 100S. So early, in fact, that the new film sim isn't even loaded onto the firmware yet. It's just a placeholder in the menu for the time being, so hopefully for the full review, I'll be able to show a bit more from that. But here's some shots taken with the other film simulation mode on the 100S. Absolutely stunning detail from these 100 and two megapixel stills, essentially the same results you would get from the GFX 100, only your shooting setup is now about half a kilogram lighter. Because losing that vertical grip means you no longer have a battery tray with two massive batteries in it, the 100S now uses the same W235 batteries as the X-T4, so it's the one that kind of looks like a speed bump, and you get to keep the dual SD card slots. Also, finally, a different joystick design on a Fuji camera. And something that they've announced together with the GFX 100S is the very remarkable GF 80mm f1.7 lens. I do have a separate video containing my coverage of this lens, so if you can't get enough of Fuji medium format goodness, do hop on over and have a look, unless you hopped over here from that video and are still disappointed that I'm still not giving away these cameras.